Hey guys, Ethan Bill here, welcome back to the YouTube video. Now in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain the two different types of ad strategies that you can run um, with your ads. These are two strategies we use, and we do mainly use one, but for smaller clients, use a different one, and I'll explain why in a second. But any questions, drop in the comment section below. Appreciate you hit the subscribe button. Let's just get straight to it. So let's say um, there's a lot of spend, a lot of resources. This, this is the strategy we'll do. Say, decent sized brand. 20, 30K per month plus, uh, lots of spend, lots of resources. We do DCTs. So we'll set up, let's say, one campaign, which will be a prospecting campaign. Then the prospecting campaign will go to a broad ad set. Now, broad just basically means that it's going to be like male uh, and female, if it's like that type of product, and then 18 to 65 plus. And then it will just be like US, for example, if, if the brand's in the US. That'll be broad. And then that'll be obviously... I, I mean, this number will basically be D C T zero zero one, and then what that will be will be three creatives, two copy, and then two headline, and then all of these will be around one concept or one angle. So it might be, um, for example, the three different personas but the same type of angle it could be three different hooks for the same type of angle it could be um three different um three different so like the same persona uh, the same hook but three different unique benefits for example so only want to change one variable everything else stays the same now also if your three creatives need to be three videos or three images never have like two videos one image because the videos will just get more spend because the way facebook algorithm works um and yeah see we don't test description it's a waste of time this is also very similar to the three two two method or the unicorn method so if they're a big brand they've got plenty of resources that's the main strategy we run and then we'll run these until they spend around a hundred dollars per day and so a hundred dollars in total um, now, we may run this for longer, like three days. Like If we see, for example, if no sales come in after $100 has been spent, we tend to just cut it. Um, obviously, depending on our views, if it's a bit higher, we spend a little bit more. But if sales have come in, $100 has been spent, we like run just a little bit longer, maybe like four or five days, because Facebook just needs a little bit more time to kind of optimize. So basically, after three days, if it's spent $100 and no sales have come in, we just turn it off. If it's been three days and there's been sales, ROAS is a bit low, but sales are kind of coming in. We're going to leave it for about four or five days, some uh, four or five days, just get a bit more spend coming through. Then if more sales obviously pick up, and um, then we let it run seven days, for example, let it run a little bit longer. Because don't forget, these are a lot of, lot of uh, data points here that you need to kind of run for Facebook to be able to optimize. Does that make sense? Um, so obviously it needs a bit more spend, but only spend $100 and after three days, if you spend $100 and got no sales, then we just turn it off. It's that simple. Um, if the ad, this is obviously for brands 20, 30K month plus and the pixel season, decent products, everything like that. Now, say we work with a, a smaller brand, for example, potentially like a startup, say they have, um, they have no pixel data or anything like that. We want slightly different campaign. Now we do eventually switch to this, but only at scale. Now, the reason we run this strategy, I'm going to go through in a second, is because when an ad, when a ad account's brand new, there's no pixel data, there's no ad account data. So Facebook's just kind of having to optimize everything themselves, and it can kind of get a bit messy. So we kind of guide Facebook, um, essentially. So what we do is we'll set up two campaigns, a prospecting campaign and a retargeting campaign. Now, the prospecting campaign will have some sort of interest audience in it, and um, depending on the country, if it's US, you may just have like uh, one interest and, you know, et cetera. If it's uh, like, I don't know, uh, Switzerland or Italy, we may stack a few just to make the audience a little bit bigger, but it kind of want an interest of around five to 10 million. And um, that's kind of what we want to be getting. So you may have to stack a few, um, et cetera. Now, people, oh, you shouldn't stack interest, but at the end of the day, we want to make sure building an audience big enough and there's no point doing Oh, and interest different because your CPMs rock it. This is just what, what I've seen. So this is why I do it. So about five to 10 million. Then what we do from here is we just run your standard creative. So like one video, uh, copy, and then headline, and that'll go down to the product page. And then we'll probably have about three of these running at once. And that's basically the prospecting campaign. And um, more or less same thing. When the ads have spent the target CPA, so a little bit lower, say the um, target CPA is about $50. You spend $50 each and no sale. Just turn them off. 
Um, retargeting is basically all the web events and the pixel data, um, if there is any, and then we're trying to catalog ad. Um, and that's literally on like five dollars per day. So these are two strategies we use. I mean, eighty percent of our clients we follow this strategy, and that is just basically because the spend is higher. They're in like a big country. It's a lot easier. If you're in like a smaller country and you know there's no pixel data, you believe it or not, I, I'm a strong believer. You do need to guide the pixel now. People will be probably judging this, but I've split tested broad and interest based audiences straight off the bat for a new brand. And interest based audience always work. Yes. Okay, hold my hands up. You're not going to scale off an interest based audience um, over time, in my opinion, based on following this method. But in the beginning, you want data. So this is what it's like. like for the first month or two, this strategy will be running because we want data. When we get data coming through and we've got some serious angles that I've got some decent consideration, we then switch over to here. So this is probably like a strategy run for like two to three, three months max we've run this strategy. And then we switch to here because we've just run. It's just, it's different for everybody. We've run DCTs on brands before, sub 20K per month, no pixel data. And we've seen this strategy here outperform this strategy. So this is why we do it. And then we run this strategy and three months later, more data, more spend, we switch to this strategy. Um, that type of thing because like if you're a lot of brands out there dive straight into this strategy it's all over youtube but the issue is is that by following this strategy you this is based off pixel data and if you've got no pixel data you're kind of screwed but if you have interest you're kind of saying okay facebook there's 10 there's 20 million people here i want you to target these 5 to 10 million instead with these ads so you're making facebook's job a little bit easier yes your cpm may be higher things like that but in the beginning this is probably going to be running this method on what 100 to 150 dollars per day anyway and that's where your max scaling potential off this type of strategy and then once you've done that you switch to this dct method and um, hope you found this video helpful any questions drop in the comments below i know this i know first it's gonna be confusing i know this is very controversial to a lot of the facebook ad gurus out there but this is what what's worked for me so i thought i'd share it with you and um, but yeah any questions drop in the comments below really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button and if you want me to run your ads bearing your skincare brand 30k a month plus or maybe below that whatever you want and um, just look in the description below where it says have ethan better with my facebook ads click that link there share a very very quick 10 15 minute chat with me and we'll assess if you are a good fit to work with us that is everything hope you enjoyed your day and i'll see you in the next video